San Francisco. As we enter into worship, please rise and join together in singing our gathering song, Bearers of Peace, which can be found on the front cover of your order of worship. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of Christ Jesus our brother, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. On this 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time, the university uh, welcomes back alumni, welcomes parents of first-year students, uh, welcomes friends from near and far to celebrate. Uh, we're grateful to the parish community here at St. Ignatius for allowing us to join your celebration of God's presence. Ours is a God of tenderness. Ours is a God of love. We place ourselves in that loving presence, sensing that God's spirit also fills the hearts of our neighbors. And we pray, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to the fullness of life. Amen. Amen. I now invite the children of the parish, kindergarten through fourth grade. We're going to check IDs. Nobody above fourth grade. Uh, to come forward for uh, the children's liturgy of the word. Glory. Glory to God in the highest, glory, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, Oh God. 
Grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart through our Lord Jesus the Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. For our children, you received sanctifying grace when you were baptized and your eternal life began. May you now appreciate and learn and grow from God's word that you may grow in holiness and bless your catechists. Please be seated. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. The word of the Lord. Let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses but the one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He replied, What do you wish me to do for you? They answered him, Grant that in your glory we may sit one at your right and the other at your left. Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism with which I will be baptized? They said, they said to him, we can. Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared. 
When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. Jesus summoned them and said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for the many. My friends, the Gospel of the Lord. The sons of Zebedee want good seats, equivalent to fifth row center at the opera, or three rows up behind the on-deck circle at Oracle, or five rows up at center court. What do they want to see? Better question, what do they want to do? They want to sit in judgment, one at his left, and one at his right. In other places, in answer to their complaints about having to give up home and family and all the comforts of life, Jesus promised the 12 that they would sit in judgment of the 12 tribes of Israel. Why, you may ask, do they want to sit in judgment of their former friends and neighbors? Recall for a moment how high their hopes had been when they first signed up with Jesus. They figured that he was indeed the Messiah. They saw him do works of great power, healing the sick and giving sight to the blind, reconciling enemies and calling out the authorities. They must have felt a sense of pride, the thrill of being at the table, of being in the room where history is happening. They also saw how the public ministry of Jesus had its ups and downs, or better, how it had a long upside and then an even steeper downside. By the time Jesus began speaking openly about his coming arrest and execution and then his resurrection from the dead, well, by that point, the crowds had mostly dispersed, leaving Jesus really just with the disciples. And the Pharisees and the scribes then saw their opportunity to take him down. And the other disciples figured that they would get caught up in the same dragnet. Yet they continued to believe in Jesus. But unlike Jesus, who loved them, the crowds, and the Pharisees all at the same time, the disciples were not so magnanimous. And so just as they jostled one another for position and prestige within the group, so too did they want to see the comeuppance of their perceived enemies of Jesus. And so James and John asked Jesus if they can ride shotgun when he finally settles scores. Their desire is understandable if banal. It is no more than a little sin, a venial sin, a little vanity, the small desire for revenge or for compensation or for what the Germans like to call schadenfreude, delectatio morosa in Latin, taking pleasure in the pain of others. It's the reason why we laugh at slapstick. Jesus warned them more than once about their desire to judge others harshly and rashly. The measure you use on others will be turned back on you. Forgive as you would be forgiven. But all this is not to say that judgment is not necessary. Jesus himself came to judge the world, and he did enlist the disciples in that mission. And he worked long and hard to purify their hearts, to ready them for the task of judgment. 
In this instance, though, James and John do not evince great spiritual depth. Judgment is a two-edged sword. On the one side are the Pharisees who sit in judgment hypocritically, placing burdens on the backs of others that they themselves would never lift. Even for the righteous, there is always the temptation of self-righteousness, which gives rise to judgmentalism, an arrogant exercise of power with mixed motives, some having to do with self-aggrandizement, some having to do with contempt of others. Jesus shows us the other side of the sword of judgment. It cuts away pretense, exposes real motives, excises the cancers of sin and pain and sorrow. Jesus judges justly and bids us to imitate him. When the adulterous woman is brought before him by the crowd, their hearts are set on stoning her to death. Jesus does not rush to judgment. Rather, with a gentle question about their purity of intention, he causes the crowd to drift away in shameful self-examination. He then engages the woman who, in fact, is guilty, although one wonders where the fellow is in, in this story. Right? So go in peace, he says. I forgive you, but in the future avoid this sin. In other words, the verdict is guilty and the sentence is forgiveness and the effect is moral amelioration. What Jesus sets as the pattern in encounter and after encounter with people caught with their hand in the cookie jar is true judgment. It does expose the truth of the moral or ethical violation, but much more importantly, it goes to the heart of the matter, to one's own sense of self and of neighbor and of God. When Jesus judges, he doesn't simply identify the crime, he seeks to right the damaged relationships, to reorient people towards the good that they are, the good that their neighbors are, ultimately, the good that God is. Conversion, conversio in Latin, is a turning back, a turning toward the light. Sin is not so much the violation of a rule as it is the violation of a trust, the betrayal of a friendship. Justice, the standard by which Jesus judges, is the ultimate horizon, the standard against which everything makes sense. The true quality of reality revealed and restored in specific instances where it had been hidden or ignored or betrayed. Jesus acts justly by forgiving sins and reconciling people to themselves, to each other and to God by inviting his disciples to accompany him during his years of public ministry, Jesus intended for them to watch all of this and to learn from him so that after his earthly mission is complete, they may continue to do as Jesus did until the end of time. And so this includes all of us as well. Doing so, Jesus offered a corrective to the wrong-headed practice of judging poorly, judging out of self-interest or out of wounded ego, or the desire for power and control over others. These poor forms of judgment are, alas, still rampant among human beings and in human communities. So Jesus shows us a better way. And then he says to his disciples, as he says to us, go and do likewise. So we should ponder this. How do we judge? By what standards and to what effect? Perhaps the, prior, the prior question is, do we even have the courage to judge? Over the past 12 months, there have been demonstrations and vigils to mourn the loss of life in Israel, Gaza, and Lebanon, and Sudan, and Congo, and Ukraine. So much desire for peace so much desire for, just, for justice. But as we judge these complex situations, can we take the vantage point of Christ, who sees every human person as child of God?
Can we judge in such a way that we promote true and lasting peace based on justice, which is based on universal appreciation of the dignity and worth of every human person, underneath the imperfections of their sins? One of the great temptations of our time is indifference. I have my money, I have my car, I have my education. I don't really care what happens to those poor folks in Africa. I don't care ultimately about those street boys in Haiti. I don't care about the war in the Middle East. This sort of indifference is deadly. Just as Frankfurter famously said, the only thing necessary for evil to triumph is for good people to do nothing. So judge we must, but we must then commit to the hard work of judging justly. And by what criteria? Not our own comfort or advantage, nor out of revenge, nor out of thanatos, the dark desire to destroy our perceived enemies, but out of love for the sake of goodness to see truth and beauty triumph. In a word, Christ-like judgment is a species of love, for it ultimately seeks the good of all. In this, we must know ourselves and our motives, questioning and clarifying and purifying our hearts so that we can truly be present to the task of judging justly. And in the same moment, by the mean, of the means by which we enter into God's judgment and healing of the world. Finally, to judge as Jesus did requires one more thing. He did not judge from the place of power and privilege, but rather chose to place himself in solidarity with us in our weakness. Jesus chose to stand with the victims of history as one of them and to judge humanity from that place, from the cross, with mercy. Now, who, who was at the left and the right of Jesus when he entered into his glory? I recall that there were two thieves, one crucified to his right and one crucified to his left. And only one of the two saw clearly enough to ask for mercy. The other judged the situation poorly and harshly. The Apostles' Creed can be found on page 10 in Breaking Bread. At this time, I ask that those of you serving as ushers please go to the back of the church and meet our sacristan. And let us profess the faith that makes us a community. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now bring our prayers before the Lord who listens to us with attention and care. And for all our beloved faithful departed, especially Nicholas L. and Louis N. Petropolis and Lou C. King, and Janet Netto, that they be found rejoicing in the fullness of God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Okay. Following, the way, following in the way of Jesus, let us offer these prayers that our hearts 
might be shaped by the Holy Spirit for the church that each community raises up leaders willing and equipped to labor with the people of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For earth, our common home, the parishes and neighborhoods find ways to reduce carbon emissions and protect habitats so that all of creation can thrive. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to war and violence, we pray for civil, civilians who face homelessness, hunger, and separation from family as wars grind onward in Gaza and Ukraine. Give, the, give world leaders the courage and humility to seek peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each city, country, and state as we approach the election, that poll workers and elected officials collaborate to support functional processes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In gratitude for the presence of our University of San Francisco community, as alumni and friends gather, that the Holy Spirit continue to weave together our community and that hearts be renewed for the work of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the intentions written in the book at the shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe, that each person carrying burdens of despair be comforted and lifted to new hope, we pray for the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For St. Ignatius Parish, that we help one another follow Jesus in practical ways, free from judgment and willing to serve one another, in times of real need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear and accept the prayers we voice, accept also the prayers we hold now in our hearts. In your tenderness, give us every grace and blessing through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Page six of your order of worship.
Pray, my friends, that these are gifts and all our prayers and sacrifices may be acceptable to our loving God. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at our hands to the praise and the glory of God's name for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts that through the purifying action of your grace we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of indeed holy and to be glorified O God who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life blessed indeed is your son present here in our midst when he gathers us by his love and when and when as once for the disciples so now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread therefore father most merciful we ask that you send forth your holy spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his friend, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his friend, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, Having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity so that together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, deacons, religious, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into your world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, with Saint Ignatius of Loyola and Saint Agnes, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Christ your Son. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As a people of faith taught by Christ to be a disciple, let us pray as he taught us to pray. Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our hearts, peace in our homes, peace in our world. Keep us free from sin and protect us from needless worry as we wait and live in joy-filled hope for the coming of your Son, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on our faith, the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us bless one another with peace. Peace, John. Peace. Wonderful. Peace. 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 For our friends praying with us from near and far, we pray. Dear Jesus, we believe that you are fully present in the bread that is blessed and broken and the wine that is blessed and poured out. In the sacrament of the Eucharist, grant thank you for making us part of you, the mystical body of Christ the Church. Renew in us your sacrificial presence and let us be united with you at this moment so that in all our thoughts, words, and actions, we may represent you and love others as you love us. Amen. My friends, behold, behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are all who are called to this supper. Lord, Lord I, I am, am not worthy, worthy that, that you, you should, should enter, enter under my roof. roof but only only say say the the word word, and my my soul soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ nourish in us our everlasting life. Patricia, the body of Christ. Amen. As we are united through the body and blood of the Lord, join together in singing, Do This in Memory of Me, which can be found on page 10 of your order of worship.
Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you have given us in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Good morning, everyone. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Greg Bonfilio. I'm the pastor here at St. Ignatius Parish. Um, on behalf of those of us who uh, have the blessing of uh, worshiping in this magnificent church and praying in such a, a beautiful way, I'd like to extend my welcome to all of you uh, USF alumni who are here. Welcome back to the hilltop, and welcome back to this church. We're always happy to have people whose lives and whose hearts and souls have been held by this building and these walls over the course of the decades. So we're very happy to have you here. Thank you for coming. Um, we, have, we, we are a parish. We have a couple of parish announcements. The first of which is um, next, or is it next Saturday? Next Saturday, October 26th, is our men's retreat, our annual men's retreat from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, in the Lone Mountain uh, building. Uh, Father John Fitzgibbons of the Society of Jesus, who's uh, sitting next to Father Paul. He's a former novice master of the former Wisconsin province of the, of the Jesuits here in the U.S. Uh, and current chancellor uh, here at the university. He will be um, the guide for the day, uh, which, uh, which will be a prayer and reflection uh, grounded in the exercises of St. Ignatius. You can sign up online um, on our website, and, or you can find the, the link in your email newsletter. And then also, uh, just a reminder that on Sunday, November 3rd, we have our annual Requiem Mass at 5 p.m. The piece that will be performed is Dan Forrest's Requiem for the Living. Um, it's a place, it's a time, it's a uh, time of prayer to honor the sorrow that we all have in our lives, but also, most especially, to remember our beloved deceased. You can submit names for the program online on our website. Uh, again, the link is also in the e-newsletter. Um, all submissions need to be made by this coming Friday, October 25th. And those of you who won't be here, I would encourage you to uh, join us online. It's a, it's a magnificent uh, evening of prayer. Uh, at this point, I'd like to introduce our coordinator of youth and family outreach, Mr. Tom Fragozo. Thank you, Greg. Good morning, St. Ignatius. Good morning, everybody at home. Good morning to alumni. Welcome back. This is an announcement for faith formation for our youth and children. It is not the first, but the second Sunday of faith formation. And adults, you may be going, okay, that's nice. You know, maybe you get to Wednesday and you are lacking a little bit of Jesus. Well, thankfully, faith formation has an answer for you. Uh, we have little Jesuses outside on the railing for you to take with you so that you can take a little Jesus home. So again, thank you and welcome back. <laughs> little Jesus is actually like a Gumby Jesus, so uh, <laughs> worth having. You can put it on your rear view mirror in your car. Finally, um, those of us, uh, on behalf of those of us here at St. Ignatius Parish, I'd like to take this opportunity because we won't have another one uh, to acknowledge Father Fitzgerald uh, and his 10 years of leadership here at USF, his 10 years of, of partnership with us in the parish. Paul, we're very uh, deeply grateful for the many ways that you've supported our ministries here at St. Ignatius through your leadership as uh, president of USF, for your support uh, of the partnership between the parish and the university, between our two Jesuit works here in San Francisco, and for your support of the restoration of this magnificent building. Paul and I um, uh, go back to, uh, to years before we were Jesuits. We were undergraduates and spent the summer in Switzerland and working and living next door to each other, working together and working. And so that partnership has uh, continued across 40 years. Um, you know, I, there's a huge opportunity. If, 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 those of you who are uh, here, uh, USSF alums, if after, after, after you have given to USF's capital campaign, and after, after, <laughs> after you have given to the annual fund that supports the annual operations of USF, you have some more philanthropic work you would like to do, we would most welcome your help in supporting uh, the, the restoration of this magnificent church. See me after Mass. 
<laughs> couldn't 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 uh, pass that up uh, that opportunity by. Anyway, Paul, on behalf of those of us here at St. Ignatius Parish, please know how grateful we are personally, how grateful I am uh, for your partnership these years. We wish you all God's best in whatever lies ahead. Uh, Godspeed and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. In the immortal words of uh, Monty Python, I'm not dead yet, um, but I will be moving on by the end of the calendar year, and I'm gonna subject myself to six months in Paris um, to rest up and get ready for the next thing. So thank you, Greg, thank you for a terrific partnership. I know not only for weekends like this, but every weekend, many of our students come and worship as part of this parish community. So thank you, thanks to our music ministers, uh, thanks to our acolytes, thanks to our readers, thanks to Father John Fitzgibbons, Chancellor of the University, and thanks to all of you for praying together today. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God continue to bless you and make you blessings for the many. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Our Mass is complete. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. O oh God of love, O oh King of peace, can be found on the back cover of your order of worship. Please return your orders of worship to the cubbies as you depart. <laughs>